And after that, I will open the floor to a few questions. And, um, and, and then the presenter will have a chance to answer this. So of course, we, we appreciate that the burden of safety itself is increasing. Uh, if you remember one of the slides, which uh, um, you know, we said that by 2010, you had about 384 uh, million people worldwide with COPD. And of course, one of the studies we've done in here in Uganda, it's showing a lot that we have younger people actually starting to develop COPD, 30, 39 years old. And of course, this would translate a lot in terms of the years of life lived with disability. Of course, which will eventually have a huge economic impact on the population of Uganda at large. And of course, we appreciate that shortness of breath is really the dark nagging symptom uh, of not just COPD, but of all chronic lung diseases. And it is the one which leads you to that vicious cycle I talked about, where someone who is shortness of breath will prefer to stay at home instead of walking and, and moving around. And that, of course, leads you to now, you know, not being able to even do the simple things. And it traps you into this vicious cycle of, you know, uh, not being able to visit friends, social isolation, and depression. And, of course, this eventually will be the habit of the intervention that he's been talking about of online rehabilitation, which, in summary, of course, included the three components of education, exercises, and behavior change. Now, of course, you realize that exercise is really just a component of the entire package. Yes, thank you so much again, yeah. uh, Dr. Lungu. And uh, the floor now. <laughs> yes, so now I'll open the floor for a few questions. And um, uh, after I think the presenter answering them, we'll have a cup of tea at the end of this. So, are there any questions? Okay, I Thank you, Dr. Dungu, for unpacking this uh, pulmonary habit situation. I've been very curious about it, as it has been evolving and developing at the Land Institute, and your health is the like, university. I have three questions. The first one being about um, the people that benefit the most from it. You mentioned that uh, all gold categories, I think starting from B2D, mm -hmm. benefit from it. But I'm wondering if there is a category that benefits more than the other. Or if any, any um, observations or analysis have been made in regard to that. I'm saying that because I'm thinking of a situation where maybe there are too many and you're trying to see who would benefit if there is one set and we are all pushing the course in such a case, but also to generally understand that. And then you mentioned the period ideally being six weeks for the, the other process and rehabilitation. Eight to 12. Eight to 12, mm -hmm. okay, good six. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering why that, the, that period, like what is the science behind the, the, the eight to 12 weeks? And then if it actually prolongs life, or is it about quality of life and feeling better um, with the disease versus prolonging your life? Okay, and then Irene. Okay, thank you for the presentation. My question is if there is a standard of care for patients who have COPD, why would you give them only rehabilitation without the medication? Okay. Okay, any other question at this time? Okay. We'll give you a chance okay. uh, Thank you very much. I think I, you know, I can start with yours. Uh, this is a additional management. So we are not taking away pharmacological management. As you can see, this is non-pharmacological management uh, of COPD. But the one thing that it does, if it is effective, it can prevent exacerbations which contribute to the need for pharmacological management always. So the benefits from this uh, supersede maybe one prescription and they prevent further prescriptions, but they, they do not replace a requirement uh, of management, maybe as I had shown in the, in the earlier strategies, as you can see, the different groups and the, the different drug classes that we need to get. But the important uh, thing is it helps uh, prevent exacerbations, improves functionality, and improves the need 
for needless prescriptions as if well done, but doesn't replace, yeah. Then, Dr. Patricia, you have three heavy uh, questions. One is, uh, as I said, most programs at first had uh, only reserved pulmonary rehabilitations for patients with very severe disease, thinking that these are the ones who benefited. But from the current gold uh, guidelines and from these uh, different sources of literature, it's not the trials were done, actually, between stable patients and very severe disease patients to try and see if there were important observations in change of symptoms and functionality. And it turns out all patients benefit uh, from these interventions, from mild to moderate disease versus very severe disease, to specifically know who is getting more benefit between, really, I, I, I can't answer that, I don't know for sure, but I think that the goal is the same, that as our golden objective is in COPD is halt progression and improve uh, functionality. Then, does it prolong life? Uh, I did not find specifically literature saying it prolongs life, but we know that the things that lead to mortality, okay? And very much exacerbations are a predictor of mortality. That's the biggest known predictor of mortality in COPD. So if you prevent exacerbations, if you aid early recognition, and prompt management, then all these will be indirect uh, ways of uh, controlling, uh, controlling or preventing or delaying mortality to, uh, to COPD. The duration is the now one thing that, that one thing that has affected pulmonary rehabilitation is uh, cost lack of robust cost-effective analysis uh, assessments of programs. There is a, a well-documented uh, graph that I don't know if I can try and see. I don't know if it's in this one, but it is, uh, it is to do with uh, Just a minute, allow me to... Okay, yeah, so people have tried to, to, to see... I'm already out of slide. Okay, there's nothing I can do. But to try and look at the effectiveness of pulmonary rehabilitation. Now, one, one thing is, it is not a one-time thing, okay? This 8 to 12 uh, week program can, is associated with benefits that can last over about 12 months, okay? Then you need to still re-engage pulmonary rehabilitation. So what I can answer from that is this eight to 12 week duration is the one which has been associated with benefits that can go up to around a year, okay? The limitation that funders will come saying will be like, it is not eternal what? The benefits may disappear at some point, so you need to keep, but this is, the reality of the disease, because this is a chronic what? disease, so the argument has to be re re keep doing to keep enhancing uh, the patients. And so, but one thing will be the few cost effectiveness analysis that have been published and show that it is not uh, it is not better to focus on pharmacology alone to manage this disease, because if you do factor in pulmonary rehabilitation. It's very cost effective in reducing the cost of care. And this is the message that needs to come out to show effectiveness. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, this is about the presentation because the change in so I'm just curious in terms of translation of this into private care, because most of these are people who are sick for quite a bit of time, and would like to gravitate to the lowest level of care, um, mm. really, sort of like rather than coming to tertiary centers, which it takes that the cost goes a little bit higher. 
And then like basic algorithms that would be used by primary care providers, who typically are weekly officers, nurses, or generalists, uh, mm -hmm. physicians, uh, in terms of uh, translation of this. I'm sorry if you uh, sort of did that. And then the second piece is in terms of like alignment with uh, software and basic tools. We use like the uh, Uganda clinical guidelines uh, for software, because that's the software, the most sustainable integration of this uh, piece. Then the second piece uh, uh, was a lot of like wide reach and dissemination of this uh, session. But what's happened was a lot of interest remotely in sort of like how people are joining. I think opening it up to for a Zoom, and I think the technology is very well, would extend the, not just this session, but generally the sessions we offer at uh, yeah. uh, the Institute, would extend the thought leadership potential of the Institute, uh, not just Uganda, but uh, also. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bonaventure, I think the last part of the comment is well noted between MLI and the IT experts here, and I think the capacity is there. And uh, in terms of uh, local capacity, we really have capacity. The difference has been implementation and translation. And this is still very much part of trying to improve awareness and make this very commonly understandable. And maybe a few years from now, we, can, we will be talking about permanent rehabilitation, like we just mentioned, that, it, that the modalities can be translated into very adoptable uh, uh, tools, even at a village hospital, anywhere in this country. But the, the thing that we need to know is how to standardize and say that if we combine these sorts of activities, they can be associated with uh, mini minimally what important clinical benefits that can translate into uh, measurable gains in symptom control and function. So I think that's something personally I really would like to go forward with, and I think it's very doable, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much for especially the science of primary rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we are in the clinic, most of the times we jump to the implementation things. But by going into the science of how does exercise here yeah, lead to benefits, I think it's, it's very good uh, for the people who are here. Uh, and also, for the current to come and present, course, over the last couple of years, I think, um, we have been in that podium. So it's good to see our colleagues come and be in the podium. This is actually very encouraging that you are making the first day of one science of 2019. Um, I'll make some comments. One of them is what she brings out. I, I think the biggest challenge we have is how to communicate, to communicate, to disseminate, to let people know the things we are doing. Um, I actually discovered, I don't know that, the Pagunare Rehabilitation House opened last Friday. And, and, and he's in the institute. So this is actually the problem. It's actually the, the, the most biggest challenge we have in the Pagunare institute. If you see our newsletter of this year, the first one, we have five higher ratings. Um, the building was finished, it's called the No House. The uh, Puma is building in Swahili. Um, it's, it's open, it's finished. And the first group of six patients under the program in Friday, even this Tuesday, it's a two, a two weeks program. And the, the communication is not there even within the world. It is within the land districts. And how the people know how to search. So this is a challenge, actually. I think we, about a year ago, we hired a uh, publicity sample of someone yeah, who tried, but here, this is a big problem uh, of communicating things well. The sleep lab, sleep lab is open and running in the housing machines. Yes. Four. four machines, so we can do four simple lab tests. But the clinicians out there, 
It's been once in a while, of course, people friends we send the patients here and there. The full PFT is there, including lung volumes, the food, everything is there. So, but we, we don't know how to communicate this. And so if you have ideas on how we can improve this without again going into the wrong side of the castle. <laughs> Um, the problem of COPD, that's my last comment, is real. For some reason, I've still refused to leave the clinic at the works. So this morning, I was doing a walk around, and there is a, a boy, or a man, or 36 years, who has been symptomatic for six years with COPD. So meaning at 30 years, he had to and he's very sick. So this, this is a very serious issue, um, which we really need to tackle uh, the problem of COPD. Um, we may not understand this, but COPD has been regarded as a disease of all the people. But now to see these people who are symptomatic, and it must seem like he showed you, we actually found many people between the age of 5 and 39 with COPD. And now, using this example of this patient, is already oxygen bound. And lastly, the issue of infections and COPD is a very big one. In the world in Chibugu, I have six patients who have been there for a year. They are oxygen bound. They cannot live. They can't afford oxygen. Actually, one man was working in South Africa, got TB there. Treated is now staying down. He cannot live. So the problem we are trying to address is here. Mm -hmm. So where does pulmonary rehabilitation come the point I want to come to? We've gone through the science. So now this patient actually most of his problem is actually psychological. Mm -hmm. He cannot believe that he can live without oxygen. Mm -hmm. okay? So if this person goes into rehabilitation. We can teach him to overcome those things, to mm -hmm. exercise, and to live that he will not have an oxygen of 100%, he will be at 70, but he's not going to collapse and die. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that on your own So those patients now need a center like this. Mm -hmm. Now the issue of primary care, pulmonary rehabilitation, this is actually what we are doing. If you are in a rehab center in the UK, you know what is happening there. A trade means, all these things, we don't have them here. We have very simple things. I think people are welcome to come and, 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 and see. Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday and Friday, there will be people in the mm -hmm. I think I will stop there. Um, <coughs> thank you very much for the presentation. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was quite keen. I know you put COPD and it is not really but I'm glad that you included other mm -hmm. conditions where this rehabilitation is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my experience, what I have seen, it is post infectious for pediatrics. Like, usually, a little older children, most of them who have had maybe an FB and then they get infectious and what. So, I have, I have two boys who have, who have been to the office, and I will just send them to. But I know the challenge is the frequency of, of, being, of going through the whatever they do. Mm -hmm. And now I hear it, it looks like people can twice a week. Twice a week. I think how much you do will determine how long you will take to feel better for some mm -hmm. So I think it's really, like you said, the issue is. Uh, maybe having it in mind, knowing that something can actually be done. Because, okay, for you it is more common. But for Pete, you might in a young child, 12 years, mm -hmm. you can hear his breath from there as they come. And then, yeah, I think it's something to follow up with. But now I'm wondering, access to what we have. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Those complications, I can comment on that. 
we have done costing of the service. Um, uh, the things which I need. The best way to make it affordable is to go into food rehabilitation. So the costing we have done based on having a group of 10, the patient will have to pay a minimum of 10,000 per session, which we really think is very affordable. But that is if you make a group of 10. Mm. If you go to individual, it will be very expensive. Because you need a physio. You will, I told you it is two times a week, mm. but two times a week times two hours. And you know how much physio, uh, the cost of physio in town? Mm. Of course, most of where I am. <laughs> so they are very expensive people. So two hours of this time is a lot of things. Uh, you have to get someone to... Um, the, the cost areas are time for the physio, time for a physician to give a lecture. Because you have seen education is very important. This is what makes it different from the gym. Mm. So education is very important. Uh, nutrition is very, very important, so you need a nutrition lecture, mm -hmm. someone to give a lecture. Mm -hmm. Then um, you can forget about the equipment you need. Maybe that one will be donated or something. What are the other post areas? Um, okay, we'll talk about the equipment, and then it's mostly really the, the human resource involved in yes, supervising and teaching. Because the biggest company is actually teaching, and and, and then we're now exercise. So, but for now, we think if we get ten people, uh, each of them paying ten thousand, the service can run. Mm -hmm. But as it, it turns out, the already seat is not easy. Under research, we managed to get two groups of ten under research. Mm -hmm. um, but now it becomes a service. We assess 10 people, but six people show up. Mm -hmm. So already that constrains the, 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 the program. Mm -hmm. but, but of course, the language which has avenues to maintain these services. Because it's not only for the service, it is for teaching mm -hmm. and training. Mm -hmm. So the service will be maintained. And maybe also to mention, uh, I mean, you talked about the, um, the funding. As a follow-up to the application, you said we have a large grant, a multinational, four countries across the world, uh, including Sri Lanka, India, Uganda, and Greece. And um, Greece, a big, big grant to conduct more research. But research is not science. So you saw in the small publication, we are able to show a benefit of particular rehabilitation to people who have TB, lung damage from TB. Mm -hmm. But that is a free post, and the research that's a very bad evidence. Mm -hmm. So now we are going to do the full RCT. But uh, alongside that, what I am bringing is there will be chief of things which fall off, which can go into what? Into the service. Mm -hmm. Probably the patient will not pay for it lecture, mm -hmm. uh, we don't pay for the medical officer to do the assessment because the, the, what also has to be is that the primary representation is not completely safe. The patient has to be properly assessed mm -hmm. to make sure that they will be safe during the exercise. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they will fall down and collapse. Mm -hmm. So they have to be assessed. Mm -hmm. But also that uh, also what I can say is that it's a very exciting thing for the patient and the family. You need to have and see. Like last Friday, there is a lady who had not worked in like four years. So the physiologist just told her, in her work, get up and work and walk. And the lady said, no, I'm not going to She said, you are going to work, you have no work anymore. And she got up and started walking. And know what the lady did? They, they, they know what her parents did. They started taking a fee. This is very important. They have not seen their mother working for years. So even if it is not going to prolong life, although I think it does, these are um, exciting things. Probably this lady, after like, there are many stories about her. Maybe she will be able to start doing some activities of daily living, like going to the bathroom. 
by taking a cup of tea from the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And this would be important for the family. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. And, and probably maybe to prepare on tools that are uh, probably helpful people who think that this service is only going to be accessed in, in level. Oh. Is that actually part of the, the grant is we really aim when it but the existence of the course we aim to train as many pieces in this country as you want. We call one and the plan is to set up the center here to be as low cost as possible. You don't really need much a bench, a few things to step on and things like that. And I think the plan is to try and modify uh, whatever it is that patients can, can lift into jerry cans. If you can get an into jerry can or cooking oil or whatever it is, fill it with water, then the actual you can do what you can actually do with service wherever you are. So of course the, the problem is uh, this is really dependent on the availability of a physiotherapist in the centers where mm -hmm. these things are going to be set up. So key of, of this is going to be training the physiotherapists. But then also, so it really means in either district hospital or in general you know, hospital. And then of course, then of course also the, the, the healthcare workers who work around those hospitals to know that these services are available really for and the patients can do it and access it. And we believe that if it is embedded within the government system and we are not buying equipment which is going to need consumables, it will be an easy service to actually maintain in a long time. All right. Uh, I think we will come to the end of the